this album is an R&B album because to me, it is all the moods of R&B. For me, you know, that, that 90s R&B era is like, that's that's what gets me, you know, gets me groovy, gets me feeling <laughs> right. To me, that's like, that's the Thank sexiest. You. The sexiest way to translate what you're trying to say is through that, through that vibe. This has been an incredible year for you. Two Grammys, an Oscar, an incredible debut album. And we're only halfway through the year. I know, I know. I've, I've heard you say, take time to like smell the roses, but have you digested everything that you've experienced in such a short amount of time? You know, I've tried to, I've been going nonstop. So everything's kind of been like, okay, that's done. All right, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. But definitely have taken a few moments to celebrate with my family and just to, to kind of chill. But for the most part, it's just been nonstop. You have a reggae EP that's gonna come soon. And I have all, like, all kinds of things. No, no, I, I, yeah, I'm working on a lot of things. I have a Christian song out. So, you know, I don't, I don't limit myself just because music is, is, a, is a playground for fun. And I, I, I listen to so many different types of music and that's how I make music. There was a, a time where you were jamming with Chris Martin. How the heck did that happen? And what's your connection with Cole? Because I'm, as you can tell, I'm a Coldplay fan. Oh my gosh, wait, how did you even know about that? That's crazy. I met him at Global Citizen at this festival that I did, and I was fangirling because, like, I sang Yellow at my uncle's wedding, and, like, I've, I've always loved their albums and been super inspired by their music, lyrically especially. So recently, I got to work with him, and we had been talking about working, and, yeah, um, I think we, we, we started something special, and I want to keep it going, but I'm a huge Chris Martin fan, so it's, it's been very, very, very dope. Big shout out from Quest Love an hour ago. I didn't bring you up. He was like, but like her, that's someone that's oh, really doing wow. it properly. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Wow, that's crazy. I'm a huge Quest Love fan, so that means the world to me. You have an Oscar. That's pretty darn cool. Um, right, I almost forgot. As soon as, as soon as you said that in, in my mind, I was like, wait a minute, what? Oh, I do have an Oscar. That's right. <laughs> Yes, you do. Fight for you, obviously. We got to hear that in Judas and the Black Messiah. Tell us what went into making this powerful song. Oh my gosh, uh, so much, so much went into it. But the main thing was after watching the film, you know, me and my collaborators, d Mile and Tierra, those are like my, my, that's like my brother and sister. Like we literally were looking at each other, like how do we not know all the details of the story? And and the narrative that, that has been put on the Panthers for so many years, the negative, things that we hear about the Panthers or the things that we don't hear at all. And so right. we kind of just started to think about that. And Fred Hampton, he was only 21 years old and younger, like doing all of these things that he was doing. There was a lot of division. There was a lot of people dividing us and he was trying to bring all communities together, not even the black community. And that was just so, so powerful to see a young person doing that. And I kind of felt empowered and I felt like, wow, I have a voice, you know, it kind of made me feel like I had a voice. So with that, all of those things, all those themes, him fighting for the love of his life, I started to think about this theme and, and I started to kind of sing that, I will always, always fight for you. Mm -hmm. And I picked up the bass and we started jamming a little bit and then I had walked away and then came back and D-Mile had started like this kind of percussive thing and I was like, oh, this is starting to feel like something. But we listened to a lot of Curtis Mayfield and a lot of Marvin Gaye and you know, the stuff that I, I love listening to anyway. So it was like, oh, okay, we're going there. We, we get to go there today, you know? Yes, yes. And kind of bring what was happening then to what, what's happening now, what we've seen in 2020 and for many years. And also musically kind of bring it to a new place, but a nostalgic place at the same time with some of those elements. So yeah, all, all of that, all of that went into it. it. And uh, it, it, it turned out to, to be everything that I, I hoped. Oh, it, it turned out all right. <laughs>